I'm like young, hot, and turnt. Like I like to party. I like to like do things. I like to move around. I like to like hang out. And I like just couldn't keep up with my friends and I couldn't do anything without being out of breath. Like I couldn't walk up the stairs. I couldn't go on a walk. That's not something that I've like kept a secret. So like don't be gagged or whatever. But yeah, I've had gastric bypass surgery and I'll tell you guys why. Hey, hey, hey y'all, it's your girl, Fanita. I got a podcast. The show before the club. This is where we sit, chat, talk, and we drink. Bottoms up, bitch. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Bottoms Up with Fanita. I'm so happy to be alone, finally. My baby daddy called into the show, y'all. Oh my God, so stay tuned for that. He's so hot and sexy, and he said he loved me on the call. I'm so geeked. But let's just get to know each other. Y'all can get to know me. And we're gonna have such fun together. Welcome to my podcast. Mm, thanks for the rose. Mm, thanks for the rose. Welcome to Bottoms Up. Welcome to Bottoms Up. <laughs> so, you know, some of you may notice that I look a little skinnier than my last couple episodes because it's been a while since we filmed, girl. Um, but you know, I just really been on my like health and wellness, my weight loss. Um, I'm just trying to get skinny as f I'm just kidding. It's actually not about like what the skill says, it's about how you feel. And I just genuinely like want to be healthier and want to live like a better lifestyle. Um, other than that, I really, I really haven't been up to much. Oh, I'm lying. I hosted Essence Festival. I hosted I didn't host Essence Festival. I hosted two stages at Essence Festival in New Orleans, like 4th of July weekend. That was really, really fun. It was like my first hosting gig. I was really nervous because I'm like, oh my God, like I'm in front of all these people and like they're listening to me. But it was super fun. And like, I don't know, I feel like that's going to be something that I try to get into more um, outside of being just like your favorite dashing, good looking podcast host. Um, But yeah, I feel like hosting is... Hosting might be my little thing. I don't know. Um, but aside from that, I haven't been up to anything. Make sure you put in the comments what you guys have been up to. Um, and let's hop into today's episode. We got a lot to talk about. We're doing fan call-ins and we're doing my hot takes. And I have some very scorching hot takes today because the internet is literally pissing me off. Some of you need jobs, literally. Um, but let's start with our call-ins. Hello? Hey, Panita. I had a question about how your life is going. My question is not a freaky question, but like, how are you doing, girl? You seem happy lately and you're glowing. So I want to know, like, what's your secret? How is life? Babes, when I tell you, life is going spectacular. Um, I usually am in a constant state of depression uh, and I just have like really bad like plateaus. But lately I feel so f- good. Like, I feel good. I'm looking good. My skin is clearing because, I, like I said, I've been losing weight. So I've been on my healthy stuff. Um, so I feel like that's just showing in my skin. And I'm just genuinely so happy. Like, all of my, like, long-term goals are starting to come into fruition. And, like, I'm doing new stuff. Like, the podcast is something that you're watching right now. and something that I'm super excited to be doing. This is something that I've wanted to do for such a long time. And, like, my episodes have been airing. And, you know, my I won the prices Right. That episode aired, like, last month. And like I said, I did the hosting thing for Essence Festival. So I'm just like, things are just happening for me. And my birthday's coming up and I'm planning my super big birthday bash, like my super big birthday party, big sexy 25. Um, and I don't know, man, I'm just happy to be here. Like, I'm just so, I don't know. I feel like April and May were not too hot months for my girl, you know, and it wasn't too hot. It wasn't too, especially May. I think we all know that was a cursed month for me. Uh, that month was hell on earth. Literally, I had a little bit of controversy and then I had a very invasive surgery. So it's like, <laughs> that was fun and cute. Um, so June and July have really been super fun months. And I know August is going to be so much fun. A lot of my friends are coming in time for my birthday. Like, I'm, like I said, I'm playing my birthday party. Like, I think I'm just going to have like a lot of fun. I'm moving into a new place. Like, it's really just like new beginnings. And like, I'm on my health and wellness, on my skincare. You know what I mean? Like... Also, I am not letting things bother me. You know what I mean? Like, after my little controversy in May, dun, 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 you know what I'm talking about. I learned that, like, like life and, like, issues are so temporary. Because the way I was getting dogged out on the internet, you would have thought I killed somebody. But literally two days later, nobody gave a f***. And that made me, the light bulb went off. Like, all of 
things that happen are so temporary in your life that when you're in the thick of it, it's like, oh my God, when is this going to end? Like I'm miserable. But when you're out of it, you're like, that wasn't even that serious. That wasn't that deep at all. So like, I feel like now that I know that like things truly, especially, especially with the internet, now that I know that things truly only like last for like a blink of an eye, nothing's been bothering me. I kind of just been letting things roll off my back and I'm a very talented person. And I know that like, I'm destined just to be like great and amazing at everything. So I don't know. Like, I feel like that it's been in like my mindset right now is literally just like handling my business and like get into the get into the coin and just continuing to like further my career. That's it, babes. Who's next? How are you so fine? From it's Eliona who follows you. Tell me like your skincare routine. I need it. I need some of it. And also, I need to know where you get your clothes from because you're fucking <laughs> stunning. Love you from Ella in Wisconsin. I love you too. Oh my god i love when people compliment me like it literally makes my coochie wet that's something that i really enjoy um okay skincare routine y'all are gonna hate me y'all are gonna hate me my skin is completely genetic uh i know i have great skin yes i know my skin is amazing but i will say since i have been bro i hate giving healthy people their flowers bro because like health people are so annoying but they do be right sometimes but ever since i've like uh cut out like you know, like soda, sugar, fat, grease, because I can't eat any of it. Um, my skin has gotten a lot, just more vibrant. Like my skin has always been clear, but sometimes it gets like patchy and dry. I've been, I, all I do, no bullshit, I wash my face and put on lotion. That's it. That's all I do. I don't have a 15 step skincare routine because honestly, I just don't believe in that. You know what I mean? I just think if you like wash your face and like use a lotion or a moisturizer, you should be good. But but I will say that like eating healthy has brightened my skin. Like now I have like a glow. You know what I mean? I walk into the sun. It's like, oh, my God, what foundation is she wearing? It's like, no, this is skin. And this isn't no f-ing, no makeup makeup look. What the f- even is that? <sighs> Everything on the Internet pisses me off. And why why do you hoes need? I'm sorry. <laughs> I was about to go on a, I was about to go on a rant, but I'm going to go on it really quick. Why is it that nobody on the internet can be an individual? Why do you need to see somebody wear a side part in their hair for you to be like, oh my God, like people are wearing side parts again. Oh my God, people are wearing mini skirts. Why can't you just fucking wear it? If that's how you like to like, y'all always got to have somebody else do some shit first. And you're like, finally, they're wearing side parts. Finally, we can wear joggers again. Finally, you're bringing back yoga pants. Like it never fucking left. Like y'all are just fucking followers but i'm gonna talk about real followers and my hot takes but anyway yeah babes i don't do nothing and i love you too and shout out to wisconsin but yeah it's just it's just face wash and lotion hi Benita. my name is riley um i f-ing love you love by you. the way thank you so much for being who you are you. um i just want to know where you get your clothes from because i'm a plus size girly myself and the plus size community for clothing sucks Mm -hmm. I don't want to wear a maxi dress. I don't Mm want to wear floral print. I don't want to look like I just walked out of a Kmart. Mm -hmm. So where do you get your clothes from? Period. Love you. Bro, let me let me let me talk to you, uh, sustainable clothing bitches for a second. Come to the podium. So when y'all are always like, wear sustainable clothing, stop wearing fast fashion. Y'all do not think about fat people at all. Point blank, period. But anyways, back to you sustainable clothing girls. Y'all are like, let's just, you should just thrift vintage Coco Chanel. You should just thrift vintage Versace. Like you should just thrift vintage. Shut the f- up, bitch. Do you think Coco Chanel s- sells a 3X? They don't even sell that shit now. And we're in 2023. When y'all talk about sustainable clothing, y'all never include fat people. And it's so irritating because literally up until fast fashion fat fat people had to wear the ugliest clothing you've ever seen just large ass pieces of fucking fabric maybe even a curtain but anyways babes but like y'all y'all don't ever y'all only think about y'all selves like and then when y'all do thrift now y'all are all like buying up all the big shit knowing that big people got limited options but y'all always buying up the big shit now and then make it into two-piece crop tops and pants and it'd be ugly as a bitch you're not a fashionista. Anyways, <clears throat> I get a lot of my clothes from, this is from Fashion Nova. She's very cute. She's very pretty. Um, When I want something quick and stylish, I'll do Fashion Nova. Fashion Nova is where I get like 
most of my stuff. Because I, I actually, I know y'all are going to like jump me for this, but I just really like their clothes. Um, where else? Pretty little thing. I get some stuff from there. I've gotten some stuff from Forever 21. If Forever 21 is hit or miss, like, you know what I mean? Uh, but I'm starting to like venture out into like different clothing lines. Like I've had, I have a couple things from Revolve. I have uh, some stuff from Mesh Key. Um, I've never gotten anything from Boohoo, but I want to like start like seeing like what they clothes talking about and Zara. I've never shopped there either. Um, but I go where I know the clothes will fit. Like, like if I know I have to do something and I need like clothes, because like when you're big, clothes fix you like a little differently. Um, so I just go where I know the clothes will fit. Like pretty little things, sizing is crazy like they're they make pants for wilt chamberlain like their pants will be big as shit and long as a long as f like their pants like swamp me and mind y'all i'm pretty tall i'm like five eight so they literally make pants for people who are like six eight but anyways i don't know i'm venturing out and then you know now that i'm getting a little smaller i can dip into some other shit because i want to tell y'all something that was like humiliating for me um, I live in LA and in LA we have gifting suites where they give you free shit, right? And I get a lot of, I get invited to a lot of uh, gifting suites and a lot of those gifting suites would have clothing. Mm, we know where this is going and they would be really cute clothes and I would go up to them and I'm like, what's like the biggest size that you guys carry? And they'd be like, ah, oh, sorry, it's a large. What? In 2023, if you are a clothing brand, there's no way the largest size you sell is a large. Also, there's no way you're coming to a influencer gifting suite and only having sizes up to a large. Like, y'all look crazy. Y'all look insane. Like, yes, those are the most used sizes, but then you have girls like me that just want to get clothes like the skinny bitches, and I can't because you guys didn't bring anything above a fucking large. It's very hurtful. And the brands that done it, you know who you are. Um, but I'm not going to name any names, but yeah, those are, those are it. Those are it. Next. Hey girl, it's Michelle, um, from Florida. I just wanted to ask you, what is your regimen on losing weight and how did you do it? Cause you look fucking amazing, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, baby. I love you. Um, I had gastric bypass surgery, uh, May 22nd. So that's how like, um, which if you go on my TikTok, that's not something that I've like kept a secret. So like, don't be gagged or whatever. Um, but yeah, I've had gastric bypass surgery and I guess, um, I'll tell you guys why I did that. Um, I realized that when I was just overweight, I was very overweight and I was very, very, very unhealthy and I didn't want to be unhealthy anymore. Like there I'm like young hot and turn like I like to party I like to like do things I like to move around I like to like hang out and I like just couldn't keep up with my friends and I couldn't do anything without being out of breath like I couldn't walk up the stairs I couldn't go on a walk I would literally if I was across the street from like something I would drive my car across the street like I didn't like want to walk and I was like yeah this is a problem and for me it was like I'm so unhealthy my skin like I said my skin got brighter but like I've thought it took me probably like a year and a half to get the surgery. Uh, not like the time frame, just like I had to move. I moved across the country. I wanted to get it before I left Alabama. So this isn't something that I just like did because I moved to LA and seen a bunch of skinny bitches. No, I wanted to do this before I moved to LA. I wanted to do it uh, in like 2021, 2022-ish. But I didn't because I didn't have time or whatever. But yeah, like I had gastric bypass and with gastric bypass, like it does, it's, it's like a misconception that it's like cheating or whatever the fuck y'all want to say. I don't give a fuck. I look fucking delicious. So I don't care what you guys think about it. Um, but aside from that, it's not like a cheat code. Like when you are like a certain size, I feel like a lot of people that are bigger kind of develop an unhealthy relationship with food, you know? And even if I were to go like work out seven days a week, really push myself, food is a problem. You know what I mean? And so without getting this surgery, I still would eat unhealthy. Like I'd work out, I'd go on walks, so I'd try to be active, but I'd come home and like ruin it because I get a 10 piece from Wingstop, large lemon pepper fries, three ranches, a large fruit punch with uh, no ice, 10 piece, all flats. It's been months. It's been months. It's been months. Um, 
anyway. So yeah, that's why I got gastric bypass so I could completely stop doing that. Um, so now with gastric bypass, I can't have sugar. Uh, I can't have anything fried for six months. I can't drink alcohol for six months. Um, and I eat very tiny portions. Um, and I have not been eating like red meat. I've only been eating like chicken and fish. Um, but that's, that's pretty much it. And I, and like, I know that like anybody that's had gastric bypass or any bariatric surgery is so happy that they've gotten it. So I will say if you've thought about getting it, maybe get it. Don't keep waiting. I don't know if surgery is scary, but like, this is like one of the safest ones. At least my doctors, they do their thing. You know what I'm saying? No mortality rates at Cedar sinai period. <sighs> Hello? Hey, Bonita. Huge fan girl. Love you so much. I love you too. Uh, keep doing you. My question would be, what would you talk about when it comes to uh, sexualizing big girls? Um, as in, like, in my experience, I can tell if a guy, you know, when he sleeps with me, like, if he's sleeping with me because, like, I'm, I'm a big girl, or if he sleeps with me because he actually, like, likes me. Okay. Um, I feel like with sexualizing big women, big women are very, very, very fetishized and sexualized. I feel like an easy way to know is if he constantly like makes comments that like are towards your weight. Like if he's like, oh my God, I love like rolls. I love cellulite. I love, I love fluffy women. I love chubby women. I love BBW. Ugh. BBWs is literally like a curse word. It's so disgusting. Um, but if he's like using that type of like verbiage towards you, then I think, you know, that he's like trying to f*** you because you're fat. Um, but if he literally just treats you like a person and treats you like a human being and doesn't have to mention your weight, like it's OK for men to like big girls. But like, especially like on TikTok, when you see like that content of like the people that make like, oh, I love black women videos. I love fat women videos. Once it starts like 10 videos about you loving fat women, it's giving fetish. 10, 10 videos about you loving black women is giving fetish. Fetish. Like, I like white men, but I ain't got to make 10 videos about it for y'all to know that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's not shit that needs to be known. You know, I, well, let me clear this because y'all love to say it. I only like white men. I've actually fucked the United Nations of men. I fucked every race except for Polynesian. That's the last one I have to check on my list. So there's any big poly men, big Samoans that want to get some good, good, some good pussy. Um, please call into my fan line and tell me that. Um, or fly me out to Hawaii. Um, but anyways, yeah, if he like only uses verbiage that like revolves around you being like fat, cut it and clip it. Because there's that's definitely him fetishizing you. Drink break. Next caller. Can we talk about ghosting? Like after you have sex with a man who ghosts you, like what does that mean? Cause that just happened to me and I'm kinda heartbroken. You know, I'm like, oh, does he think, like, I can mean, ask you to he just got a relationship, so it's like, mm, I did it because I proved that I'm negative before and after. Okay. But I'm like, no, no, you blocked me. Mm. Don't share this. Don't share this. <laughs> Girl, what if you call to a show if you don't want that shit to be shared? Uh, congrats on not having an STD. Those aren't fun. Um... Uh, man, I'm not going to lie to you. He still probably thinks you gave him the STD. That's probably why he blocked you. I'm not going to lie. I guess the pussy wasn't good enough to like look past the chlamydia. But uh, maybe. I mean, I don't really fucking know. Uh, maybe? Girl, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. Who do I look like to you? An oracle? I don't know. And then he blocked you. You know, like, here's the thing, babes. Let me like, like, let me like coddle you a little bit. So sorry that he blocked you. But also, if, like, you just like, if he fucked you right when he got a relationship, babes, you're the rebound. It was never going to be you, unfortunately. You're never going to get picked. You're going to be last on the on the field left. Odd, odd one out. It was never going to be you. Um, so, yeah, you were just a rebound, and then he got chlamydia, and he was like, F I got to probably stop f***ing these like, random bitches. I don't know if you're a random bitch to him or whatever, but whatever the case may be, he's probably like, damn, I got to stop like raw dog and bitches because now I have now my penis is fucking burning and like it's creaming at the top so like maybe he was just like Fuck it and he blocked you because he still thinks you gave him the STD hey man I'm horny I like a man of few words 
That's like crazy that you like called in like right now because I'm super fucking horny for you. I'm so wet right now. It's like you should come over and like do something about this. I'm literally soaking through the fucking chair. I'm so ready for you. Thank you for that, Daddy. Hello? Not freaky deaky, Nita. Anyways, okay, I have a question. So, was there ever a moment in your life that you have not felt as confident? And what helped you, what encouraged you to get over that? Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to press a number, but I'm just going to hang up. So, I hope you get it. Bye. Love okay. you. Love you, too. Thank you for calling in, babe. Uh, hell, yeah. A majority of my life, I was the least confident person. The thing is, I'm just a good actress. Uh, you know what I'm saying? From a young age, I've been... Um, what people may say, a young Shakespearean. You know, I've been able to like method act permanently for my whole life. But yeah, like once I was growing up, I was super insecure, heavily insecure. Uh, I would never wear, like if if like future me could go to pass me, like I would never even wear like, uh, like a crop top. I didn't wear a crop top till I went to college. You know what I mean? And I'm talking about, it was like barely a crop top. Like it was like, it's like a little bit of stomach. You know what I'm saying? Not too much. Um, but I feel like what gave me confidence is that the people around me and then the people are, the people around me really encouraged me. And then also learning that, like, I'm more than just like my attractiveness or what, what I look like. You know what I mean? I'm a very um, amazing human being, not even being cocky, just being like just being serious. Ask anybody that knows me in real life and you'll hear the same thing. But like knowing that, like, I bring more to the table than my than my attractiveness and like, I don't know, not caring if people find me attractive or not has helped me too. Cause it's like, now I just do shit for me. Like I don't care about any type of gays except for the LGBTQ ones, of course. <laughs> that was funny. That was not all funny. That was like a fun on. That was like a play on words. Uh, anyways, uh, but yeah, like I just, the people around me really keep me encouraged and they really make sure. Cause I definitely, even now, I still have my days where I don't feel confident. I don't feel beautiful. And like it, it, like it does get to me sometimes, but like I just remember that like I'm more than that. And the proof is in the pudding, baby. You can see that I really be doing my, I be doing my big one all the time. So, thank you. Hello, is it my baby daddy? Hi, Fanita. Um, I was wondering how did you get to success, and I love your videos so much. Have a good day. Uh, my day's going good. They uh, they got me up here at the ass crack of dawn. At like nine o'clock sharp, I'm sleepy as hell. I got like five hours of sleep. I'm I'm actually like so tired. Um, but aside from that, I had a good episode that I filmed, so I'm doing really good today. Um, and how do I get my success? This is gonna sound corny and oh, and play it out. But y'all, I'm telling you, the recipe to success is literally just being yourself and going with what you know. I really didn't do anything for this. Is like I, I don't know. It's like how did you get this? Is like people like me and people want to like push me and help me be more successful I feel like um like I started TikTok and I did my shit and like people seen that I was super funny and I was charismatic and then one thing led to another then another then another then another now you're watching me on my podcast it's like people really see like my value and what I can bring to the table and like I can be funny but I can also be serious and intense and like I just have so much range as an individual and anything that I really put my mind to I can like be good at it um, so what I would say is like, make sure that you're like trying to like evolve in like something that you're passionate about. Like a lot of people want to be like social media famous because they think it's like easy and it's not hard, but not everybody's meant to be an influencer or meant to be like a social media personality type. Cause you know, it's like, also what I've noticed about a lot of influencers is that a lot of their social media personalities don't translate in real life. Like, so truly figure out who you are and what you want to be and do stuff that you're passionate about like don't do shit that you think is like oh this is gonna be a quicker way to get to the money and get to the whatever because there's people that i know that have five million six million followers and don't make a fucking dime from social media there are influencers that literally have jobs so don't think that like if you rush into this like you're gonna get rich you know what i'm saying it does actually take <laughs> some work it does but thank you baby hello hey Samita girl I just going to ask all the hoes out there, how do y'all wash your pussy, okay? I feel like we need to have a public announcement about this shit because 
Some of y'all bitches gonna be washing your coochie correctly and then have the audacity if you wanna be throwing it up in people's faces and whatnot. So we need to have a poll or a questionnaire or whatever about how do y'all wash your coochie? Wash your coochie cats, please and thank you. Cause some of y'all ain't washing correctly. Bye, love you. <laughs> Okay, I kid you not, bro. I was at an event one time, bro, and it was like it was like a pool event, and uh, some girls was twerking, and I did smell one day twerk win. Like I smelled her twerk win, bro, <laughs> and I was like, "There's no fucking way. There's no way she's shaking ass like this." And like it smelled a little funky. Like, I, 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 it smelled a little funky. Like, the twerk wind was, it was a little funky. Uh, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I wash my pussy. Like, I feel like every bitch washes her pussy, but I feel like it also, it's also what we, like, I'm not gonna lie though, twin, let's be serious. If you eating Buffalo wing stop every night with fucking four gallons of ranch, the coochie's gonna taste a little, it's gonna have a twang to it. You know what I mean? It, it is like what we're putting in our bodies too, while the pussy gets a little bit of a smell. Like, if it's just, like, fried chicken, Big Macs, McDonald's, fries, and sweet and sour sauce, and no water, you're just drinking iced tea and f***ing Takis, the cooch is going to have a little bit of a twang. It might taste like a Dave's Hot Chicken Sandwich, if you will. Um, so, I just say, like, be mindful of the things that you eat, the things that you're putting in your body. Also, do not put soap inside your cooch. But, you know what I'm saying? Just scrub around her. She is a self-cleaning organ. And stop letting these boys touch y'all f***ing vaginas with dirty ass fingernails and hands. That's why your pH be off. Y'all be letting f***ing Dave finger f*** you in a station wagon behind the Best Buy with his dirty ass f***ing hands after he just ate a triple decker cheeseburger and has f***ing chicken grease around his f***ing mouth and you let him eat your pussy. Stop it. Okay. Hello. Fatima. Who? Girl. Who's that? Who's Fatima? I'm about to go back to work. This job life real no, it's actually okay i just want money and i don't like it here please help you you on your own girl get out the mud like we all did i had to work that shitty job too man i wasn't always beautiful sitting on my white throne i had to work serving jobs and like bro people treat you like you're literally a servant when you're like working a restaurant bro like why do people walk into a restaurant and think they're suddenly at like their mansion in in the hamptons like bitch this is olive garden why the fuck are you treating me like this like they want like wet toilets and shit like bitch you know you wipe your goddamn mouth with your t-shirt stop coming in here acting like acting like you you do some shit like this is this is not the hotel transylvania bitch like treat me with a little bit of human decency bro i would not wish like serving and working in a restaurant on my worst enemy also the cooks be so fucking creepy bro this the amount of times i've been sexually harassed in a restaurant i could literally be jeff bezos hello hey for you it's uh felipe <laughs> i'm on my way to victoria's secret one of my girls that's my man but i also wanted to get you something he's so always thinking of me your bra size was i know it's probably changing you right now <laughs> since you're busy like i'm baking your back and shit but like if you can give me an estimate you know i've been praying your titties don't drink so I just need like a nice man. All right. That was it. Love you. Ah, I love you too, baby. Uh, that's my baby daddy, Felipe. Um, you know, my man, like, I don't even want to brag on my man too much because that is my man. Like, I'm not going to dive into much of our, like, relationship, but he, like, I don't know, like, you heard him. He says he, like, he loves me. Like, he loves me. But Bae's always thinking to me, um, I don't know, Bae, like, my, my titties have been shrinking. Unfortunately, your prayer is not working because my titties have been getting smaller. I would, if I had to guess, I'd say maybe like a, I don't know, maybe like a 40 double D, 40 triple D. I don't, I don't really know, man. Um, how about you come over and take my bra off and find out? Your little sexy Brazilian ass. He's so sexy, y'all. He's so fine. Oh my God. I love him so bad. I just want him to like stop playing and like for us to be a family. Um, but I love you too. And thank you for calling in daddy. Bye. Oh my God. That's like me. Like I love him. <sighs> Hello. Um, Girl, on with do it. Do you see yourself getting married or <sighs> possibly being in a relationship soon? What's your favorite thing about Ben and... I'm getting pissed off. About Ben and um, Amber. Okay, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> Oop. I just got an alert that it was titties out. Um...
It took you forever to say that question. Um, oh, I absolutely 100% want to be married. I know looking at me is like, oh, Fanny is forever a bachelorette, which is like true, but like, I want a family. Like, I want to have kids. And you know, a year ago to say, F them kids. But the, as I'm getting older, I do want a family because I feel like I've never really had a family of my own because my family hates me. Um, and I really want a husband and I want a partner and I want someone who's going to be there for me. And I want my kids to have like a good father. Uh, but yes, I do want to get married. I don't know if I'll be in a relationship soon. Probably not. Like, you know, what's crazy, bro. I'm literally a fucking catch. Like I'm such a catch and nobody's ever really tried to be my man. And I think that's like egregious as but I don't know if I'll be in a relationship soon or whatever. But if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it don't. My favorite thing about Amber and Ben is that they are so understanding. They're so understanding and they're so, like, caring. And they give me great advice. I never listen to it. But the advice is great and they're usually always right. And they're so welcoming and they're, like, love me and I love them and like they're a very loving they're a very loving couple and I like watching them like love each other too like I love like their marriage and their family and I'm so happy to have met them they mean so much to me who's next go Harry go Harry go 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 who's next uh yeah so I just had a quick question um uh, my name is Alex from New York I just need to know how the f are you this fine funny though like Bro, what the f I like up every single post you be putting down. You make me laugh like you're the one. Bae, I was literally just talking about how I'm a catch. You, Alex from New York, you see me. Like, you get it. Like, you un you're so f***ing real for that. Everybody wants to pretend. You actually get it. Like, I'm hot as f***. Like, you see it. Like, I look good. I'm, like, I'm... Thick, body's tea, I get money, like, I'm pretty as shit, like, you get me so hard, like, babe, let's just get married, because you're, you see me for who I am, like, you see me, like, you're the one, like, I want this, Alex, DM me on Instagram, at Fanita, and, like, let's talk about, I don't know, like, maybe being, like, bi-coastal with each other or something, like, you come to LA, I'll come to New York, like, you know what I'm saying, go get coffee, go to, like, Madison Square Garden, get a bacon and cheese, type shit, you know what I'm saying, and I'm not a smoochie, baby. Um, but thanks, babe. I love you so much. Thank you for calling in. And that is the end of our fan questions. I love talking to y'all. Like, I feel like this is the only way for y'all to get to know the real me. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, like, get rid of my most hated. Oh, my fucking God. This is good as shit. Y'all want to know what's in here? So, to keep me looking so young, because without makeup, I look... I don't know. Because since I've been losing weight, I'm, like, regressing. Like I'm, like, aging backwards. Like, I posted a video yesterday and I look literally like 19 years old um but so to keep me looking like young and rejuvenated I like to put a little bit of iguana pea orange tangerine a little bit of mango from the Brazilian rainforest and then a dash of water and I tell you it like literally you're drinking from the fountain of youth I'm literally immortal or orange Gatorade zero because I don't drink sugar remember that all right, now it's time for my next segment. Hot, hot takes! takes! I'm in the hot seat and we're gonna look at some hot takes because the internet has been pissing me off so much lately. So I'm ready to get my fucking opinion. The big one, the biggest. Checking who, who views your story. I'm not gonna lie, there's a couple, there's a couple boys I like to look out for when I post a story. Like, obviously we're posting the stories for attention. Like nobody actually posts stories because they want people to, like you want somebody to see your story. Whether that's like your jealous ex best friend or like the boy that you're talking to that you met on hands, like you want somebody to check your story and hell yeah, I'll be checking who read my story. F yeah, I wanna make sure my baby daddy seen it. And if my baby daddy didn't see it, I'm gonna send it to him directly. That's how I like, you know what I'm saying? If my baby daddy didn't see my story yet, I'll just send it to him and like be like, I look cute here. And he'll be like, yes, you're so pretty. I love you. And I'm like, okay, love you too. But yes, I love checking who views my story. And then also you be having like hating ass hoes that sl slick don't like you but be in your goddamn story because they're nosy as f you nosy bro bitch go get a job huh <laughs> the guy should always pay for the girl on the first date absolutely you know what i'm saying i'm a modern woman but that's my traditional stance you know here here Fanita believes that men should be the provider in a perfect world in my perfect world i would have a husband that literally just wants to pay for everything obviously i know i don't know a man paying bro oh being a woman is so hard 
Because if a man pays for everything and he provides, I feel like I can't talk my shit. Like, how are you talking shit to somebody that literally pays a light bill? Like, now I'm going to come home in the dark and the lights is cut off. You know what I'm saying? Like, what if, like, I'm going to come home and he, he turned the hot water off and shit because I got smart. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, I feel like, but I also know there are men that just, like, genuinely like paying for women's everything. That's the type of man that I want. In a perfect world, which I know life isn't perfect, but in a perfect world for me and in my relationship, my man would pay for, like, the rent. He'd pay for the dates and he'd pay for, like, all the household stuff. And I'd pay for, like, my individual things. Like, I'd pay for, like, my clothes and, like, my upkeep because I'm pretty. And, like, I'd pay for my upkeep. But in, in a perfect world, he would pay for that, too. But... In a realistic world, which is what I live in, I'm cool with the 50-50 shit. Like, going 50-50 on the rent, like, we both live here. That makes sense. We have kids. Like, it doesn't matter who pays a bill as long as the bills get paid. But as far as a first date, as, like, like I said, like, that's the only way I stay traditional is, like, I think men should pay for women's first date. I feel like that's, men are courting, and that should be something that, like, a man pays for. Like, I feel like chivalry's dying, and all these boys want to be treated like bitches. But no, I think men should. I think men should definitely pay for the first date. People can li really lose interest after having sex. Hell yes. If you have sex with somebody and it's like bad, that's like dreaming of like, uh, dreaming of like, you know, when you're like all day thinking about like what you're going to eat for dinner, right? And like you are contemplating it, you know exactly what you're going to order. You're so excited to get it. And then you get it and it's f cold and it's disgusting and it's gross. That's like, that's what like having bad sex is. Like if somebody, if I have sex with somebody and the sex isn't good, there is no way we're going to continue to do what we're doing. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I've lost interest after people. I've literally, <laughs> one, I've literally had sex with people and I don't remember their names. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. If somebody held me at gunpoint and said name, God damn it, I'm exposing myself. But if they held me at gunpoint and said name somebody's, Name held me a picture of somebody and was like, who is this? And I was at gunpoint. My brains will be splattered on the six o'clock news because I wouldn't be able to tell you. And I've definitely literally f guys and never talked to them again uh, because like the sex wasn't good enough to get a call back. Instagram threads. I did not download that shit. Uh, I have Twitter, bro. I'm not downloading. I'm not downloading 85 new apps, bro. Like I don't like change. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm not getting on threads. <laughs> the writer's strike um here at brad tv and past your bedtime uh and here at bottoms up we support the writer's strike we support the actor strike give them a livable wage pay them more money um and that's really all i have to say about that i support sag and the writer's strike wholeheartedly wait i just got word Flying in from my producer, Brad is actually an unscripted and not inside the union at all. Um, but we still support. All right, we have one more. And this is the one I've been wanting to talk about. Pinky Dolls live streams. Okay, love Pinky Doll. She hasn't did anything. But what pisses me off about the internet now is like y'all will see like one person do one thing and then jump on a bandwagon. Like y'all found out that girl was making a little bit of fucking coin doing, mm, thank you so good. Mm, thank you so good. Yeah, choke on it. Yeah, choke on it. And like now y'all are all doing it. And it's just like y'all are fucking annoying. Y'all cannot be individuals to save your life. Like I am so annoyed by it. And like y'all find out she makes a little bit of money doing it. And y'all are all doing it now. Like, first of all, I have a simpler solution than begging for change on live. How about, and this might be a radical idea, you get a fucking job, you loser. Uh, and not you, Pinky Doll, because you're you're the realest. You know what I'm saying? All these bitches is your sons. Um, but the rest of you who are literally just like copying her and not doing a good job just because you think you can make a little bit of money. Let me tell you something. Y'all will pop popcorn with a flat iron and do some like ridiculous shit on live for money, but won't start an OnlyFans because you respect yourself? Like, me personally, I'd rather show titties and pussy than, mmm, yummy, thank you for the rose. Mind you, a rose is a penny. You was on live for five hours and made 34 cents. We really have to evaluate our career stages in life. And I'm sorry, I'm going to be the only real bitch to keep it a thousand with you. You need to go ahead and type in mcdonalds dot com slash career and, and apply at McDonald's. Like, I feel like a lot of y'all just can't be individuals to save your 
fucking life. Like, oh my God, you're bringing back ripped jeans. I literally threw away all my ripped jeans because people said that they weren't cool anymore. Like, is this is this like 1942 Germany? Like, girl, wear the ripped jeans. Like, wear the, wear the ripped jeans. Side part your hair. Nobody's gonna jump you for it. Nobody. You don't need a fucking martyr for everything you want to do in your fucking personal life. Jenna, literally, nobody gives a fuck what you wear. I'm gonna be honest. You get your clothes from Kmart. It's like, come on, man. Like, it doesn't it doesn't fucking matter. But like, y'all always have to like, oh my god, I'm so glad you're bringing back like open toed sandals at the beach. Like, oh my god, I'm so glad you're bringing back like curling your hair. I'm so glad you're bringing back like straightening your hair. I'm so glad you're bringing back like eating French fries. Like, shut the f up, please. Also, what the f is a girl dinner? A lot of you, a lot of you bitches need to go see therapists and and control that eating disorder. Cause it's not funny. What do you mean you don't eat dinner? Like eating sleep is girl dinner? I, I worry about a lot of y'all, man. For real. Also, every fucking week is something new with you bitches. No makeup, makeup. Like, this is how you should, like, like, bro, I'm not gonna lie. Soft era girl is like, what the fuck is no makeup makeup, man? We all can tell that you're wearing concealer and lashes. Like, and also, who gives a fuck if people know you're wearing makeup? I feel like every day y'all telling yourself, because as a girl, I don't give a fuck if another girl's wearing foundation. So wh who is this no makeup makeup look for? You know what I mean? It's still, whether you just put like a dot, also that like one drop of concealer is not working, babes. Do the whole eye. Do the whole eye, okay? Um, but you still don't look awake. And that's the end of our hot takes. This has been so much fun. Uh, I got to talk my shit, look sexy as f and then y'all got to know a little bit more about me. Um, what I will want to say before we close on out of here, because, you know, our girls got to go get f Samoan boys, please call me, seriously. Like, whoever's the sexiest can f me first. I mean, y'all could even, like, run a train on me. Can you imagine getting a train ran on you by, like, seven Samoans? You might actually be put in a wheelchair. Like, that sounds, like, crazy. But honestly, I'm, like, um, intrigued by it. Oh, anyways, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching the podcast. This has been something that I've been working on for a long time, and I'm so glad that all of you enjoy it and you're always tuned in. And some of you have been telling me that I'm, like, your new favorite podcast host, which that means a lot to me because I just started and I'm fresh in this shit. Um, but I know I'll be the best. I think it'll be – I think this is going to be really, really good. And I appreciate you guys for joining me for along the ride. Um, make sure that you comment, like, and subscribe to the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel. And go watch all my other podcasts that aren't as great as this one, um, but are cool too. And make sure you drop a comment saying, Fanita's gorgeous. I wish I was married to her. I wish she was my wife. We'd look so good together as a couple. How did she get so funny, charismatic, and those great set of tits? It's because I'm wearing boob tape. Um, but this has been so much fun, and I'm so glad you guys joined me for my first solo episode. Hopefully it's not the last. Um, I love you guys so much, and thank you for supporting me. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Fanita. F-A-N-N-I-T-A. And you can find me on Twitter at Fanita Leggett. That's my last name. And I love you guys so much. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.